ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Today inshallah in what short time I have I will talk on the topic that I've chosen which is كيف يستعد السلف للرمضان How do the Salaf al-Salih, our pious predecessors, prepare for the month of Ramadan? And because Ramadan is coming very soon, I found this to be an appropriate topic for all of us to benefit from, insha'Allah ta'ala. And I've divided the discussion into three parts, or two parts, three points that we can do before Ramadan starts, and then three things that we can do while Ramadan has started. And all of these points are taken from the Kitab and the Sunnah, and what the Sahab and the Salaf Ridwan Allah alayhim ajma'een used to do. So inshallah, we can benefit from this, because Ramadan is a time which we benefit from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us, or grants us the blessings of Ramadan, which we should not waste. The first point, before Ramadan begins, the Salaf of Salih, they used to ensure that if they were missing any fasts from the previous Ramadan, that they complete those fasts. And this is only if they miss those fasts due to a legislated reason. Means if you were traveling or a woman who was menstruating and they did not make up those fasts from last Ramadan, before the next Ramadan comes, they must make it up. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, كان يكون علي صوم من رمضان فما أستطيع أن أقضيه إلا في شعبان رواه المسلم. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that I have had some fasts that I had to make up from last Ramadan. And I was not able to make them up except in the month of Sha'ban, which is one month before Ramadan. So the scholars, they mention like Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah and Sharh Sahih Muslim, that this means that the Salaf and the Khalaf, the scholars of the earlier scholars and the latter scholars all agreed that the one who has missed some fast due to a legislated need, like Aisha's case, because she was menstruating those days she missed, she had to make it up before the next Ramadan. So the scholars mentioned that anyone who has a fast, they're missing, due to an udr shari, a legislated need, they must make it up before the next Ramadan. And if they do not, then they are sinning, because they have to make it up before the next Ramadan comes. Now the question comes, what happens if someone does not do that? When the next Ramadan comes. In that case, they still have to make it up. As Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, passed his fatwa. But they have to make tawbah ila Allah. And they have to ask Allah for forgiveness. Because you delayed it past this time. Imam Anawi said, rahimahullah, the time to make it up is before the Ramadan. And Aisha said, in Sha'ban, she did it. So it's very important for those of us who have missed some days, Udul Shar'i. As for the one who missed it for no reason, then no fast can, make, can, can be made up for it. If someone were to break his fast or her fast for no reason, then they are not allowed to make up that fast according to the strongest opinion. And why the one who missed it for a legislated reason must make it up? is because Allah he says in the Quran, in, if you are fasting, or in Ramadan, in كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ If you are sick, or you are traveling, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرٍ That you make it up in other days that are coming. Means you replace there, you compensate in days to come. So the first thing we learned, the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Ali Majma'in, if they had any fast owing, the first thing to do before Ramadan began is to make up those fasts. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right, because Ramadan is for us to fast. Number two, the Salaf al-Salih, they used to fast a lot in the month of Sha'ban, either most of it or a lot of it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself used to fast quite a bit in the month of Sha'ban, like the one the month we're in right now. As it comes in the Hadith, Sahih, Bukhari, Muslim, Aisha described the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ma ma 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 kana Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam yasumu min shahr akthar 
من شعبان كان يسوم شعبان كله وفي الرواية كان يسوم شعبان إلا قليل عائشة she described رضي الله تعالى عنها that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never fasted a month as much as he fasted in the month of Sha'ban. He used to fast all of Sha'ban, and one hadith mentions, or a little bit, all of Sha'ban except for a little bit. So this hadith teaches us that the Rasul Wasallam used to fast the month of Sha'ban, a lot of it, or almost all of it, if not all of it. And the reason he's doing this, والسلام, is to prepare for the month of Ramadan, as a practice. Hafid ibn Rajib, rahimahullah, he mentioned, why? He says here, rahimahullah, inna siyamuhu, verily his fasting in this month, is katamreen ala siyam al-Ramadan. It is a practice for the fasting of Ramadan. Then he mentioned Hafid ibn Rajib, rahimahullah, the reason the Surah did this practice, is that yadkhulu fi Ramadan, so he may enter Ramadan bi quwwatin wa nashat. So he may enter Ramadan with strength and energy. And he mentions that in his book, Lata'if al-Ma'arif. Rasulullah is practicing the fast of Ramadan in Sha'ban, so he may enter Ramadan bi quwwah, with strength and nasat. And we know, the first couple of days of Ramadan, very difficult. Because we haven't fasted for 11 months. And then we become amazed how difficult it is. Rasulullah is practicing. And that's from the sunnah of Rasulullah So for us, we should try our best if we're able to, fast some of those days and prepare ourselves because like everything else in dunya if there's a preparation made then things will become easy but if you throw yourself into it then it becomes challenging and we know this is the Rasul Wasallam. he has more strength and more taqwa than me and you so it's a recommendation for us so that's the second point preparing for Ramadan by fasting the Sha'ban most of it or some of it or how much of it if you can tied to that the third point which the Sahab and Salaf used to do is that they used to be very pleased and have glad tidings or happiness for the entering of the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a month to be happy, that is coming, no doubt. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put much benefit in there. As He says in the Quran, Jalla wa'ala, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month Allah He revealed the Quran. And we know the Quran in and of itself is a book we should be pleased with. Qul bifadlillahi. وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَلِذَلِكِ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Allah says, say, by Allah's mercy and His bounty, you should be pleased. You should be pleased by that. And the Mufassirin, they mention the بِفَضِّ اللَّهِ يَعْنَيْ Quran. By the Qur'an itself, we should be happy. We should be pleased. What about the month where Allah revealed the Qur'an to Rasulullah and he studied in there? Hafin ibn Rajib, rahimahullah, again he mentioned something from the ulama before. Where he says, some of the ulama, they said, كَيْفَ لَا يُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِفَتْحِ الْأَبْوَابِ الْجِنَانِ وَكَيْفَ لَا يُبَشِّرُ الْمُذْنِبِ مُذْنِبِ بِغَلْقِ الْأَبْوَابِ الْنِيرَانِ وَكَيْفَ لَا يُبَشِّرُ عَاقِلِ بِوَقْتٍ يَغُلُّ فِيهِ الشَّيَاطِينِ How is it that somebody who is a believer might not be happy with a month where the gates of the Jannah are open? How can the one who is sinning not be happy by the month where the gates of the hellfire are closed? How can not the one who is intelligent be happy with a month when the shayateen are chained? وَمِنْ أَيْنِ يَشْبَهُ هَذِي زَمَانِ بِزَمَانِ And how can you resemble this month of Ramadan with any other month? So here we learn, here have Mraj mentioning here, rhetorically questioning who will not be pleased by a month like this? Where the gates of Jannah are open, and the gates of Hafar are closed, and a chance to repent, and shayateen are, are chained. So no doubt, most of us will agree that month of Ramadan, we should be pleased by its approach. And we should be anticipating its approach. Because we need the Ramadan. We need to gain taqwa of Allah. We need to get our sins forgiven. We need to draw closer to Allah. So we may enter the Jannah bi rahmatih. By Allah's mercy. With that being said, there's also something we should mention. That it's often and famously reported that some of the Salaf used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six months prior to Ramadan for Allah to make them reach Ramadan. And six months after that, that Allah may accept their Ramadan. However, this narration is not sahih. It's not authentic. Half and Rajid does report this narration from the Tabi'i or Salaf named Ma'ala ibn Fadl, where he said, Kanu, the Salaf, Yadu'oon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sitta to ashur, Yabluguhum Ramadan, wa Yadu'oonuhu sitta to ashur, and Yatakabal minhum. But the Salaf they used to make dua to Allah six months in advance, that Allah entered them or allowed them to reach Ramadan. 
And six months after that Allah may accept it. However, there's no sanad, there's no chain of narration that could be found for such a narration. So it's safer that we do not believe in its authenticity until it can be authenticated. It's an important note. Because when it comes to amassing narration about the Sahab and Salaf, we take that which is sahih, which is authentic. We don't need that which is not. So it's important to mention this. However, there were some Salaf who used to make dua on Ramadan, okay? Like Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, rahimahullah, and that narration is sahih. But for the Sahab and Salaf, they didn't used to do this as an authentic narration. But nonetheless, we should be pleased by its approach. We need to be. Because Ramadan is the month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored over all other months with all the blessings and the benefits. So these three things the Sahab and Salaf they did at least before the month of Ramadan entered. So the first one being that they make up all misfasts if they missed it for a legislated reason. Number two, they will fast most if not a lot of the month of Sha'ban as a practice for the month of Ramadan. And thirdly, they'll be pleased by its approach. And be happy because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives much and He rewards much in the month of Ramadan. Those three things are for four Ramadan. Now, inshallah, I'll mention some of the things we can do while the month of Ramadan is in. And the Sahab and the Salaf, they used to do Ridwan alayhim ajma'in. Because if we need to fast, we need to fast the way they fasted. And we need to remember that they fasted in the most complete ways. The leader being the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first is that when Ramadan approaches or enters, we should increase in the recitation of the Qur'an. We know the month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. شَهْرُ Ramadan الَّذِي أُنزِلِ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Ramadan is the month Allah revealed the Qur'an. And the Prophet ﷺ, amongst his greatest tasks, or the greatest activity he did in Ramadan, was قِرَاءَةُ الْكِتَابِ اللَّهِ Reading the book of Allah. As Ibn Abbas mentioned, رضي الله تعالى عنهما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وأجود النا أجود ما يكون في رمضان حين يلقاه جبريل عليه السلام وكان جبريل عليه السلام يلقاه في كل ليلة من رمضان يدارسه القرآن وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود بخير من ريح المرسلة حديث البخاري ابن عباس سيد رضي الله تعالى عنهما that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was from the most generous of people and the most generous that he was was in the month of Ramadan when he used to meet Jibreel alayhi salam. And Jibreel alayhi salam used to come at every night in Ramadan and he used to study the Quran together. And the Prophet alayhi salam was more generous and good than the blowing wind. Now this hadith is important because number one, it teaches that Rasulullah was pleased in Ramadan because he's studying the Quran. He's studying with Jibreel alayhi salam the Quran. Hafid ibn Rahajir rahimahullah explained the hadith, he mentioned what's important about this. Istihbab in this hadith is a recommendation for ikthar min qira'ati al-Qur'an fi Ramadan. To increase in the recitation of the book of Allah. In this hadith is the recommendation to increase in the recitation of the Qur'an. Because Rasulullah was happy and he was doing that. He's already half of the book of Allah. He already memorized the Qur'an. He is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. However, he's still reviewing every night. Maraja'a review. And this means that Ramadan, we should be doing this. Pick up the book of Allah, review it amongst ourselves, with ourselves, with our families. Review what you memorized. Read that which you did not. And to continuously do that. Because Ramadan is a month of the Qur'an. The Taraweeh alone, we get to hear the Qur'an. For those who stand from beginning to end, the entire Qur'an. But Rasulullah made that a habit. Up until the day he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which in that year he read the Qur'an, revealed it twice. Now where is the best place to read the Qur'an? No doubt it's the masajid. The masjid is the best place for you to come to read the Qur'an if you're capable of doing so and study it together. As the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said another hadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira, مَا مِنْ قَوْمٍ يَجْرِسُونَ فِي بَيْتٍ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ They're not a single group of people who sit in, the house, in a house from the houses of Allah i.e. the masajid. And what are they doing? Yitluna kitab Allah. They're reciting the book of Allah. And they're studying, studying it between each other, between themselves. When they do this, what happens? Ghashyat alayhim rahmah. Wanzalat alayhim al-sakeen. Tranquility descends upon them. Wa ghashyatum al-rahmah. And mercy envelopes them. Wa hafatum al-malaika. And the angels surround them. Wa dhakarum Allah. Allah reminds them or remembers them. Fi man indah. For those who are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith Muslim. So here Rasulullah another hadith praising the reading of the Quran in the masjid. 
And the month of the Qur'an is the month where we are supposed to read the Qur'an. Now is it a must that we do that? No. But it's better. Especially when we have a lot of free time to come with your friend or family and sit whoever you know and we read the Qur'an. You read something to him, he reads something to you like this. This is one of the greatest things. And if you're not able to do it in the masjid, you do it where you can. But in the masjid has fadl. Imam al nawwi he said, Rahimullah, in explaining that hadith, fi hadha, in this hadith, is dalil, evidence, li fadl, for the excellence of al-ijtima' ala tilawat al-Qur'an fi al-masjid. For the excellence of gathering to read the Qur'an in the masjid. And that leads to my second point. When the month of Ramadan, you should come to the masjid more. To read the Qur'an, to worship Allah by salah, to do good deeds in the masjid. Now unfortunately, most times outside of Ramadan, we can't make it to the masjid. Most people, they're not able to. Due to work or families, it's hard to be in the masjid. But in the month of Ramadan, we should make special effort to come just to the masjid. And sit in it. And worship Allah with it. In there. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wanted His masajid and wants His masajid to be for His worship. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدِ لِلَّهِ The masajid are only for Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا do not call upon anyone besides Allah. Sahab and Salaf used to come to the masjid in Ramadan. Number one, obviously to worship Allah. And number two, to protect their fast. Because when you're outside the masjid, you may be in places where there's a lot of wrongdoing, or a lot of sin, or a lot of people who may instigate, or bother you and make you do behave in a way that's not appropriate. Especially when you're fasting. But some of the Salaf, specifically Abu Hurairah, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when they were fasting, they would come to the masjid. One of the salaf, his name is Abu Mutawakkil al Naji, rahimahullah, he mentioned, Kan Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, wa ashabuhu ida samu, jalasu fil masjid, wa qalu, nutahir siyamana. Abu Mutawakkil al Naji said, Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and his companions, when they used to fast, they used to come to the masjid, and they used to say, Let us purify our fast. Let us purify our fast. Rawr kitab is Zuhud. Hunnadi min Sarri bi Sarri min Sahih. Now, this is amazing. Abu Hurayr radi anhu and Sahaba come to the masjid to protect the fast, to purify it. From what? Law, false speech, bad action, bad behavior, because we know Ramadan, we're not supposed to behave badly. But why the masjid? Because the masjid is Allah's house, the best place. Afdalu bilad ilallahi, ahab bilad ilallahi, masajiduha. The best places inside of Allah are the masajid. So if you come to the masjid, either to first read the Qur'an, or to protect yourself by doing ibadat, that's one of the greatest things you can do. And that's what the masjid is for. And Ramadan, if you notice, most of us come to the masjid extra often, or more often, because taraweeh is there later on, or to pray the salah and jama'ah, and like this. But for those who have time, come to the masjid. This is what the sahaba and salaf did, amongst them of Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when they're fasting. Not to say Abu Hurairah could not purify or protect his fast, but it's better and safer in the masjid. What about me and you then? We're not the salaf, but we need to follow the tariq. Why the salaf used to come to the masjid anyways? Because the masjid is the best places. Today, if you look in our society, we hardly come to the masjid. We may congregate in places, like the mata'im, the restaurants. Right? We might find us in the shopping mall, the streets. When we have free time. Not I'm talking when you're busy. Sahaba salaf, where do you used to be in the free time? In the masjid. We need to bring that back. Imam al-Sha'bi, he said, Rahimahullah, Kanu, the Sahab and Salaf, إِذَا فَرَغُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ آتَوَ الْمَسَاجِ The Salaf of Salih, when they finished, or they were unoccupied of anything, they used to come to the masjid. Bayhaqi reported in Shu'ab al-Iman, the Rijal al-Thiqat. When they were unoccupied, they used to come to the masjid. Allahu Akbar. That's the Sahab and Salaf. And there's many shawahid for that. Like in the Hadith in Bukhari, Ali ibn Talib, when he had an argument with Fatima, where did he go? He came to the masjid, the Surah said, where did he find him? Sleeping in the masjid. And many times Sahaba will come to the masjid looking for Rasulullah in the masjid. Because when they have free time, they came to the masjid. Ahabba bila ilallahi masajiduha. So Ramadan, Sahaba didn't change their habit of coming to the masjid because they used to always go to the masjid. When they had free time, and for us it's an encouragement, especially when we're living nowadays, where the masajid are empty, to go to the masajid. And read the Quran, to study, madaris al-ilm. Do some study, do some teaching, do some reading of Qur'an, teach each other, remind each other, pray salah. All things you can do. But Ramadan, the Sahaba and Salaf, someone who would come to the masjid to protect themselves from the bad speech and actions that are found outside. And it's important because now, 
Ramadan comes in the summertime, many of us have a lot of time to come to the masjid. Whereas before, it may be more difficult. That is the second point. And attached to this is the point number three, which is attached to the masjid, which is that when the month of Ramadan came, came the Sahaba and Salaf would avoid vain speech, idle speech, and bad behavior. And this is from the goals of fasting. That we become better Muslims. We don't speak bad speech. And we don't behave poorly. Now the best place to do that again is the masjid. But when you come to the masjid, you have to protect yourself from that. Some people when they come to the masjid, they don't read the Quran too much, they're talking amongst each other. Which is not haram. But then sometimes you're speaking things that have no benefit. And when you're fasting, it's worse than that. Because you're supposed to fast from those things. Umm bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to address many of the sahaba and the salaf at his time when the month of Ramadan came. As he mentioned, Musanna Abdul Razak and other books, authentically, and Ibn Dunya Fadal Ramadan and other books, authentic. Kan Umm bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu idha dakhal shah Ramadan. When the month of Ramadan came, Umm al Khattab used to address the, those around him. And he used to tell them many things. And amongst the things he used to say was, Aqillu lagu fil masajid. Make less your or decrease your vain speech or idle speech when in the masjid. Now, why is this important? Because many people say, okay, I will come to the masjid because Ramadan, I don't want to be found in other places where there's food and distraction. And then they come to the masjid and they're not doing ibad. Getting tired of reading the book of Allah, the kutub of ilm. Even remembering Allah, they start talking vain speech. It's not beneficial. Because if we come to the masjid, we have to behave, do what the, what the masjid is for. The Rasul ﷺ, when the man who urinated in the masjid, Rasul ﷺ corrected him and taught him what the masjid is for. It's not a place, it's not correct to urinate or, have, or defecate or any of those things in the masjid. What, what is the masjid for? Dhikrillah, to remember Allah. Wa tilawati Qur'an, wa salah. So when you come to the masjid, you don't want to be talking idle speech. Because generally speaking, in Ramadan, you're holding back your tongue from that. You're holding back from those things. Generally, Rasulullah said, I never used to speak too much idle speech. Idle speech is that which is karam and batil. It's falsehood. It's useless. Mixed up speech. And many times, that's something else that happens. People are fasting. They cannot eat. They cannot drink. Sometimes they sleep. Maybe they play, but they talk a lot sometimes. It's best we hold back from that. Allah says, the believers, they hold back from the vain speech, idle speech. But this is important. When you come to the masjid to read the Quran and do azkar, we hold back from that. But in the masjid, not took nizarik. The masjid was not built for that. Rasulullah was told one sahabi and another hadith. It wasn't built for that. But what's the benefit here? Well, if you come to the masjid or outside the masjid, Ramadan, hold back the bad speech, because the true essence of Ramadan is to become better Muslims. Kutiba alaykum musiyam. Allah says, fasting has been prescribed on you, like it has been prescribed for those before you. Allakum tattaqoon, so you may gain taqwa. And taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God fearness, or God consciousness, however you want to translate it, taqwa of Allah means doing, the order, doing what Allah ordered us to do. And staying away from the prohibitions, vain talk, idle speech is not from the ways when it comes to Ramadan. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ الْسِيَامُ Fasting is not from akl wa shurb, it's not from eating and drinking. What is fasting? إِنَّمَ السِّيَامُ مِنْ لَغْ مِنْ لَغْ الرَّفَضِ It's from vain, idle speech, and rafat. The true fast is from vain or idle speech and rafal. Hadith Sahih and Shaykh al Bani said Sahih the Ghayb, it's Sahih. Now, what is these two things that Sahih mentioned? This is the goal. Ramadan is not the food and drink, it's the holding back from the lagu and the rafal. And here we have Umar telling us when you come to Masjid, hold back from that. Imam al Munawi, rahimahullah, he said, Allahu kalam al batin wa khtilat al kalam. False speech and mixed up speech. Falsehood and mixed up speech. And what's rafat? Rafat is even worse. It's fuhsh, tasrih al fuhsh. Clearly mentioning obscenities. Clear mention of obscenities. For example, talking about intercourse in the masajid and things of this nature. It's not befitting. To even speak about it in any case. Rafat is not to be spoken of. Obscenities. Rasulullah never used to be someone who was fahish, but not fahish. So when we're fasting in Ramadan, if we're coming to the masjid or outside it, we have to hold back. And sometimes that's where many of the youth or the people when the Ramadan comes, they may fall short. They may be reading the Quran, they're doing the taraweeh, other things, but then their speech. And part of the things, the goal of Ramadan, if you hold back from the speech, is that you purify and correct the tongue. Because 30 days you're practicing again and again. 
And this is important for us to know. In Ramadan, these benefits, that if we hold on to them, they will change us outside Ramadan, insha'Allah. Because whatever good we do in Ramadan, like holding back from idle speech, it will become our custom. As the Arabs mentioned, an adat tabi'at thaniya. Customs are second nature. And Rasulullah mentioned in the hadith, al khayru ad, good is the habit. So if we're in the masjid, and we're reading Quran for 30 days, or outside of it, insha'Allah we'll continue after Ramadan. And if you stand in tahajjid for 30 days, or taraweeh, then insha'Allah after that you will continue it. And if we are holding back from bad behavior, then insha'Allah we will hold on to it, like this. But it's not that we take care only of the outward things. Sometimes people, they focus too much on the things they're doing, like they're reading Quran and praying salah, but they're not looking at the heart, changing their intention, their behavior, lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why if you hold back from bad speech, and like connected to it with bad behavior, then you've gained the goal of the fasting, because taqwa of Allah is coming close. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hayat al-Bukhari Muslim, he discouraged the person who fasts, but does not rectify that. مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلُ الزُّورُ وَعَمِلَ بِهِ Whoever doesn't leave off false speech and acting upon it, فَلَيْسَ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَاجَةً Allah has no need from him. And يَدَعْ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ Allah has no need for him to leave off his food and drink. If you're fasting and you're not leaving off false speech and action, Allah has no need for you to leave off your food and drink. It's very important. So if we look at these three benefits, we see while Ramadan comes, we have also some things we can do. Number one, we mentioned that you increase the recitation of the Qur'an. And number two, we mention that you come to the masajid more often. And the third one, hold back from the vain speech, idle speech, and the bad behavior. But connected to that as well, Ramadan also has other things that we can add, inshallah, that we should benefit from, and that which is to be eager in doing good when the month is here. Ramadan should not make us lazy. It's true enough you'll be tired because of the lack of food and drink in the, in the mornings, or the daytime, and long standing at night. But Ramadan is a time for effort and energy. That's what Rasulullah said when he practiced, the practice fasting Sha'ban, so he can have this nashat, the, the strength and energy in the Ramadan. And Ramadan should be a time we make a lot of hirs, a lot of ijtihad. فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ Allah says, be getting good. What are the things that sometimes you miss in Ramadan? They're lazy in the taraweeh. Praying, if they're not doing the sunnah of the eight, some people cutting short in the taraweeh, missing some days for no excuse, or maybe praying at four or two and then taking a break to talk and this and this. That is not what we should be doing no matter Ramadan. We should try our best, especially when we're young, to make ijtihad in that. One day, Sufyan al rahimahullah, he was addressing the youth. He said, Ya Shabab, Qumu, oh you stand up for tahajjud, ma dumtu shababan, as long as you're young. Stand up for tahajjud, as long as you're young. This narration is sahih. Now you look carefully today, one time, what you see sometimes, in the month of Ramadan, the youth use what they have before. I fasted the day, so I deserve to play in the night. They're in the masjid, outside the masjid. La hawla billah, not in. Talking, eating, drinking. That's what Sufyan had just him. Stand, as long as you're young. And that shows us, if not Ramadan comes, it should be time you be eager and good. Because you may not reach the next Ramadan. What is the alternative if you cannot stand up for taraweeh in Ramadan? You're too tired, you're lazy, you don't feel like, it. go to sleep. Umar radiallahu ta'ala in the same address he gave in the beginning of Ramadan, he said, Allah has prescribed for you fasting, but he did not prescribe for you the taraweeh. means it's not wajib, it's sunnah. If you're going to stand, stand for Allah. وَإِلَّا فَلْيَنَمْ عَلَى فراشك. Sleep on your bed, he said. Sleep on your bed if you're not going to pray taraweeh. He then, we tell the youth to say, you're not going to pray taraweeh, don't hang around the side. Fooling around, getting carried away. Go home and sleep. Why? So tomorrow you get up for fajr, to suhoor, to other good deeds. Say important advice, we don't waste Ramadan. And some of Salaf would mention that, we know, the person is fasting, sleeping is ibadah anyways. Right, generally. Not that we're saying we sleep more in Ramadan, not saying that. But generally, it's an ibad. But what is important is you see sometimes you they're wasting effort. You have a chance. Ya baqi the khayr, the one who wants good, aqbil, come closer. So we encourage as well, when it comes to the good deeds, all through Ramadan, make it jihad, effort. فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ Rasul Sallallahu as Ramadan increased in the days, he strengthened the worship. The last ten nights, he tied his izar, means he strengthened the ibad. Not, he slowed down. Ya Allah. It's important for us to know that. And connected to all this is the goals of Ramadan. If we follow these advice, inshallah, we come out Ramadan better. Because Ramadan for us is a place, is a time, we need to take advantage to get better. We need to come closer to Allah. تَقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ and Ramadan is the unique time where you give up a lot of work 
Some people take time off if you can. Or they don't do as much of the foolishness or frivolous activities. Or they speak less or they hang on less in order to come closer to Allah. This is important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that somebody makes time for his worship. Because if you make time for Allah's worship, Allah will give you richness. In a hadith reported by Ma'qil ibn Yasar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قال الله سبحان Allah he said, يَا عِبَادِي تَفَرَّغْ لِعِبَادَتِي Oh my servants, make time. Free your time from my worship. Why? If you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put, will give you wealth or richness. As the hadith mentions. Make time for my worship, I will fill you or I'll give you richness. And the one who doesn't do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will faqr bain aynayhi, poverty between his eyes, and will keep him busy with shughul. Busyness that's not recommended. So we look carefully at Ramadan, what's unique is that we're spending our time for Allah to come closer to Him. So the one who takes time off and sacrifices energy in order to worship Allah, Allah will give him that richness. Hadith Sahih Musnad, the Shaykh Al-Wadi'i, rahimahullah. It's very unique, very important if you look carefully at Ramadan. And added to that is the last 10 days of Ramadan when we do the tahajjud, or so itikaf. And what is the itikaf besides? Tafarraq li'ibadatillah. 10 days straight. For Allah's sake, you're standing Praying, sitting, ta'ifina, wal qa'imi, qa'imina says, wal ruka'i sujood. It's important for us to know this. Ramadan is like this, benefiting from it. And I want to mention from all of these things that these steps for Ramadan, and after it, or during it, we also have to remember at some points after Ramadan, which is to continue the good that we did. It is not good enough that we do all the ibadah in Ramadan and we leave the good that we did. The Sahaba and Salaf. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum They were the people when they did good They continued to do that They continued And Rasulullah s.a.w. encouraged it That when you do good you continue it Ahab al-a'mal Allah adwamuha wa inqal The most beloved action to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That which is consistent and continuous Even if it's less Hayat al-mutafiqun alayhi And if you look carefully If you look carefully at Ramadan With all the habits you're developing In terms of reading Quran And holding back from bad behavior And coming to the masajid We need to continue that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha mentions that when she used to do the action, she held on to it. She continued it based on the hadith of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in Ramadan, we have now some tips before Ramadan. While in Ramadan, after that, we hold tightly to that which we did. Al Khayru Aad. Hadith Sahih, good is a habit. We need to continue it. And it's important, especially when we're young, because sometimes we don't value the Ramadan we were supposed to. But if we look at our salaf, what they did, give us the encouragement and the guidance. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَاهُمُ اللَّهِ Those are the people Allah has guided. فَبِهُدَاهِ مِخْتَدِي In the guidance, take as role model. And we need to try our best to maximize this coming Ramadan, similar to the way that they, that the way they did. And if we also encourage those around us to take care of it. Encourage them. Want those around us and our family other than them to do that good. It should not be that this is us benefiting. If you know some of this, you tell the others. Because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Ramadan, he will not hold, he will not restrict the good to himself. He would encourage those around him. Like in the last 10 nights, Hayd al-Bukhari Muslim, when he used to stay up, he used to stay up all night. He used to wake up his family as well. To help him that, to do the ibad, to help him as well in their ibad. But it's important for us to benefit from Ramadan. Especially those who are young and those who find sometimes Ramadan becomes habitual, it becomes ritual, it doesn't become ibad. It's an ibad. We have to try our best in maximizing from it. So inshallah to finish the talk, those are the benefits we mentioned prior to Ramadan that you can benefit from and while in Ramadan and while after it. And we should try our best as well that people who are upon the sunnah that we continuously learn and study. Some of the scholars they mention and we mention as well. Is it wrong? Is it not allowed to study the ilm while Ramadan is there or should we focus just on the book of Allah? The correct opinion? You can continue the durus. You can continue. As Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah he said in the fatawa that there is no such asr. There is no foundation for that. That we leave off all the studies, all the hadith, all the ilm, and just focus on the Qur'an. Whatever has been narrated from some of the salaf on this, are asanid, the asanid of da'if. The da'if. And most of what's mentioned by that is half in the Rajiv, rahimahullah, and Ata'if Ma'arif, from Imam Zuhri, and Sufyan al-Thawri, and others, but the change are authentic. And we see, it's nothing wrong to read the Qur'an, as you mentioned, to increase, but don't leave off also knowledge, because it's ibadah as well. We have to remember, we say time for Ramadan is also time for da'wah ila Allah, to encourage those around us also to come better. Because while people are coming to the masajid, or coming to taraweeh, 
or i'tikaf, we should call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call them to the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Call them to the tariq of the salaf of salih, the path and the way of the salaf of salih, and to benefit from that which we are able to benefit people by. And inshallah, I don't want to continue more than that, right? But I want to mention this. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us with that which I mentioned. Wa akhir da'amana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.